Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm really excited about today's video because it's a q and I've never done one of these, it's my first one. And I've been collecting questions on Instagram. If you don't follow me there, if you wanna ask a question, that's a good place to drop it. And I get really similar questions asked frequently and I usually answer in stories which are only up for 24 hours. And I thought this was a good way to uh, consolidate the questions and make them available at all times. And I will timestamp each question. So if you know exactly what you're looking for or you wanna browse the questions, just go ahead and, and browse through the timestamps. I think I'm gonna title this video uh, vitamin A derivative retinol Q&A because I'll just pick out all of the questions about tretinoin and retinols and then we'll deal with another batch of questions in another video and that way I feel like it has more um, structure to it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Let's start off by being true to skincare and start with a question about vitamin A or retin A retinol derivatives. And the question was, uh, is there a natural Retin-A that I could use for my face? And so I want to kind of backtrack a little bit for people who are more into the natural skincare and they don't want synthetics. Vitamin A is a vitamin that our body needs. It's important for our vision. It's important for our organs, our soft tissues, our skin, obviously and we consume it every day in our foods. And the highest concentration of vitamin A is actually in meats um, and specifically organ meats such as liver. You're gonna get a very high concentration of vitamin A. Vitamin A is one of those vitamins that, uh, not like vitamin C, where if you take too much vitamin C, your kidneys will just filter it out. So you don't wanna have a deficiency in vitamin A, but there is such a thing as a toxic load of vitamin A. So applying it on your face, taking supplements and eating vitamin A rich foods can lead you to have too much vitamin A. So if you wanna stay natural, I would suggest uh, focusing on your diet and organ meats and milk and dairy and things like that. Now the body uh, takes that type of vitamin A and makes it into retinol, which gets distributed throughout the organs. And of course the skin is not a top priority. That's why when we apply it topically, we get more skin benefit because the body distributes it to points of most importance and the skin is just not high up on that list. And that's why topical vitamin A is better for the skin. Vitamin A is found in both both plant foods and animal foods. The active form of vitamin A, which comes in the form of retinal, retinol, and retinoic acid, is found from in animal foods. Within the plant world, we have pro-vitamin A, and that would include alpha-carotene, beta-carotene, and beta-cryptoxanthin. So the inactive pro-vitamin A's can be converted to the active, the retinols, the retinals, and the retinoic acids. So there's a conversion process in the body that's constantly happening, and the skin is just not of the highest priority. Now, just a quick word on babies in utero. Babies need vitamin A for healthy development, for the development of their eyes and their organs, their joints, their tissues. But a toxic amount of vitamin A, just like we can have a vitamin A toxicity, babies can have a vitamin A toxicity. And that is why isotretinoin or Accutane is teratogenic, meaning it causes birth defects because that's such a concentrated form of vitamin A that it puts uh, the in utero babies in a toxic state of vitamin A. If we get into a toxic state of vitamin A, it's also not good for us. So it's really important to keep vitamin A in a healthy balance. But specifically with skincare, because the plant world doesn't create the active form of vitamin A, retinol, retinol, or retinoic acid, I can't think of anything you could apply topically um, that would be beneficial in that way. And of course, if you were to apply uh, organ meats to your face, um, who knows? But 
I can't imagine there's no mechanism for absorption. Um, so I think the only way is if you don't want to apply a synthetic on your skin, then just uh, make sure you have a healthy, well-balanced diet. Next question, what do you recommend for wrinkles under the eyes? For wrinkles under the eyes, I think my number one favorite is going to be the Skin Better Eye Max. And the reason for that is not only does it hydrate and hydration helps soften the lines, but it also has retinol in it. So it's helping strengthen that skin. So over time, those wrinkles should diminish. Or even if you were to use Retin-A under the eyes, um, to diminish lines, but you're gonna go through a phase where the Retin-A is making you dry and peely, and that will accentuate the wrinkles and make them look worse for a time until the skin strengthens and then the wrinkles look better. So you could use IMAX or you could use Retin-A or Retinol and combine it with a hydrating cream that will soften the lines. My other number one cream for under the eyes for crepiness, fine lines and wrinkles would be the Interfuse Eye from Skin Better or the Elastin um, Restorative Eye Treatment, which has the Trihex technology, which also helps boost the synthesis of collagen and strengthen the skin. So alternating creams, if you buy one and you finish it and you take you know, you switch to a different one, you're, you're kind of coming at the collagen from multiple different pathways. One is through the uh, vitamin A retinol pathway. One is through the peptides of elastin, the trihex technology. And so that would be a nice balance. So, so those would be my, my three favorite creams. Skin Better Eye Max, Skin Better Interfuse, and Elastin Restorative Eye Treatment. Is prescription tretinoin better than medical grade retinol? Mm. It's not it's better and it's worse. So if you're trying to get the benefits of the vitamin A, the tretinoin is the best. There's nothing better, stronger, or more effective, and also nothing that has the most side effects of the dryness, the redness, the peeling, the irritation. So they go together. You get a strong product, it's going to have strong results, and you're going to have the side effects until your skin acclimates to it and the side effects subside. However, using tretinoin in a higher concentration long term is going to keep the state the skin in a state of inflammation and irritation, which is actually worse. So the way I would answer this question is tretinoin is the best to get from point A to point B. It's the strongest and the fastest. And once you've done the treatment, let's say a four month treatment of tretinoin, then retinol is the best because it doesn't cause the inflammation and irritation in the skin. And so it will continue to give you the benefits of tretinoin without giving you the side effects. So your skin will be happier and you're not inducing chronic inflammation. Best retinol serum on non-retin days. If you're asking for a retinol on days you don't use tretinoin, I think um, the uh, Elastin 0.5 retinol is a great one. And I also love the Skin Better Alpha Ret because the Alpha Ret comes with alpha and beta hydroxy acids. So you get a really nice exfoliation on the nights, on the nights that you're not using tretinoin. Next question, how to start tretinoin? I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube about how to start tretinoin and generally everyone says the same thing. My method is different and I actually feel it's more effective because if you start on tretinoin once a week and the idea is over time bump up to two times a week, I feel that the skin has enough time to become aggravated and then calm down and return to normal before you apply Retin-A again, and you're always in the cycle of total recovery, forgetting about the 
or achieving any kind of adaptation and then you're hit again until you fully recover from it. And it just, it doesn't work. I speak from personal experience. I used to think that I can't use tretinoin because no matter how much I tried, I was always irritated, dry, red, flaky. No matter, no matter if it was two months, six months, eight months, I could not get used to tretinoin. And so I ended up discovering that this is a much more effective way to get used to tretinoin. So take a rice grain amount, half a rice grain if you have to. The point isn't how much you take, it's how frequently you use it. So I say take a tiny amount, it's gonna be too small to distribute on your whole face. So you're gonna mix it with your hydrator and you're going to apply that two to three times a week. It's going to be a teeny tiny amount, but your skin is steadily getting used to that teeny tiny amount because it's being applied two to three times a week. And then you can try one of two things. You can try to take that teeny tiny amount and apply it eventually increase from two times a week to three times a week to every other night to every night this teeny tiny amount. And then once you're using a teeny tiny amount every night, increase to maybe a rice grain and a half or two rice grains and do that two nights a week, maintaining the other nights at just that original tiny amount. And then again, you do the exact same thing and then you increase that amount to three times a week and every other night and then every night. Or what you can do is once you're used to that teeny tiny amount, increase by just a smidge and also do it every night. So the amount that you're increasing is so tiny that you shouldn't have a significant reaction. You can always take breaks and take a day off. Okay, next question. Best moisturizer over Retin-A? I feel like this goes really great with the question we just answered. So when I have used the intensive uh, one gram nightly tretinoin uh, protocols, I wanted something that's really soothing to the skin. And a lot of the normal hydrators that I love can actually be feel like they're stinging the skin when you're uh, when you're on the high dose regimen. So my favorite hydrators when the skin is really irritated, I'm gonna start with that really red, really sensitive, really irritated and peeling a lot. My favorite would be the Elastin Skin Nectar because it's designed to soothe. It's designed for post-procedure skin. So it's designed to soothe aggravated sensitive skin. So that's a great one. The hydrating cream from Zio is also designed for, it's, it's a rescue. It's a rescue when you're on the high dose tretinoin protocol and you need to just calm the skin and hydrate the skin. So the hydrating cream from Zio is great. Um, yeah, those are the two that I would reach for if I really needed hydration. Otherwise, if you're maybe just a little sensitive, a little dry, and you want just a little bit more um, hydration, I think Skin Better Science Trio is fantastic. The Zio Daily Power Defense is great and it does actually help restore the skin barrier, but if you're very uh, sensitized, it will sting. And another good one is the Ultra Light Moisturizer from Elastin. This is also designed for rosacea for sensitive and post-procedure skin. It's quite rich and soothing. So those would be my favorites for um, hydration after retinol. And the last question on our vitamin A theme here is uh, products to help with sunspots on the legs and arms. For me, my number one favorite for the body hyperpigmentation, that's usually gonna be epidermal hyperpigmentation. It's usually sun damage, sunspots. Um, and that pigmentation lives in the epidermis, not in the dermis. So we really wanna hit the epidermis and get it to turn over. 
The strongest product would be the Radical Night Repair from Zio, but that is extremely strong. It's literally prescription grade. So I go very gentle on that. The one I'm more comfortable starting people on is the Retinol Skin Brightener. And that comes in multiple concentrations. I usually stick to 0.5 or 1% for the body. And it's beautiful in the sense that it's designed to work primarily in the epidermis. So it really helps with the brightening and it really helps break up and, and deal with that pigment on the epidermal level. So that would be my favorite is use the retinol skin brightener and then you can use it with either the transform um, body lotion from Elastin, which is amazing. And it has the Trihex technology. So you're also tightening, you're helping to eliminate crepiness with that lotion. So those two work really nicely together. Or you could use the Zeo body lotion if, if you wanted to keep it in one brand, but that would be my favorite body retinol. So that's all the questions regarding retinol, uh, vitamin A um, derivatives. Um, we've got a few questions left that are more about procedures or other skincare questions. So I'm gonna leave those for the next video. So stay tuned and let me know how you like this and if we should do this again, because I thought this was really fun and I hope you enjoyed the answer. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.